Um, okay, so we turn now from the themes of Shabbat to the themes of Passover Yisker. Maria Popova wrote, 200 million years ago, long before we walked the earth, it was a world of cold-blooded creatures and dull color, a kind of terrestrial sea of brown and green. They were plants, but their reproduction was a tenuous game of chance. They released their pollen into the wind, into the water, against the staggering improbability that it might reach another member of their species. But then, in the Cretaceous period, flowers appeared and carpeted the world with astonishing rapidity, because in some poetic sense, they invented love. Once there were flowers, there were fruit, that transcendent alchemy of sunlight into sugar. Once there were fruit, plants could enlist the help of animals in a kind of trade, sweetness for a lift to mate. Animals savored the sugars in the fruit, converted them into energy and proteins, and a new world of warm-blooded mammals came alive. Without flowers, there would be no us, no poetry, no, sci no science, no music. Popova continues, Darwin could not comprehend how flowers could emerge so suddenly and take over so completely. He called it an abominable mystery. <laughs> but out of that mystery, a new world was born, governed by greater complexity and interdependence and animal desire, with the bloom as its emblem of seduction. Flowers, she said, in some poetic sense, invented love. Without flowers, there would be no us. On Passover, we read the Song of Songs, our people's great love story, and it compares love and beloveds to flowers. My beloved to me is a spray of henna blooms from the vineyards of Ein Gedi. Like a lily among the thorns, so is my darling among the maidens. My beloved spoke thus to me, arise, my darling, my fair one, come away, for now the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the blossoms have appeared in the land, the vines in blossom give off fragrance. Arise, my darling, my fair one, come away. Let us go early to the vineyards, let us see if the vine has flowered, if its blossoms have opened, if the pomegranates are in bloom, there I will give my love to you. Once there were flowers, there were fruit, she said. The Song of Songs again. Like an apple tree among trees of the forest, so is my beloved among the youths. I delight to sit in his shade, and his fruit is sweet to my mouth. I went down to the nut grove to see the budding of the veil, to see if the vines had blossomed, if the pomegranates were in bloom. The mandrakes yield their fragrance. At our doors are all choice fruits. Both freshly picked and long stored have I kept, my beloved, for you. What Maria Popova is saying about the evolution of flowers and fruit is that they were the beginning of reciprocity. They were the beginning of interdependence, of not just romantic love, but all love. All love between all beings. All the finding of ourselves connected with one another. All the dependence and interdependence, all the belonging to each other. <coughs> all love. The reason that death hurts is because we love. It reminds me of a favorite poem by Lee Young Lee. From blossoms comes this brown paper bag of peaches we bought from the boy at the bend in the road where we turned toward signs painted peaches. From laden boughs, from hands, from sweet fellowship in the bins comes nectar at the roadside. Succulent peaches we devour, dusty skin and all, comes the familiar dust of summer, dust we eat. Oh, to take what we love inside, to carry within us an orchard, to eat not only the skin but the shade, not only the sugar but the days, to hold the fruit in our hands, adore it, then bite into the round jubilance of peach. There are days we live as if death were nowhere in the background. From joy to joy to joy, from wing to wing, from blossom to blossom, to impossible blossom, to sweet, impossible blossom. A 
few weeks ago, I went for a walk with a member of our congregation who suffered a bitter, unfathomable death this year. As we were writing to one another to meet up, I suggested that we walk in the park that day because the flowers were just beginning to bloom on the trees. As soon as I sent the message, I remembered that my message would cause him pain. Because as much as those blossoms would give him cheer, they would also wound him. His loved one delighted in flowers, adored flowers. And he had been dreading spring without his dear family member, dreading walking among the blooming trees, dreading all of the colorful gardens without his dear one to ooh and ah, to wonder and praise, to feel the joy of all those blooms. How the beauty brings us joy, how the beauty brings us pain. This is by Monica Babbitt. You don't just lose someone once. You lose them when you close your eyes each night and as you open them each morning. You lose them throughout the day, an unused coffee cup, an empty chair, a pair of boots no longer there. You lose them as the sun sets and darkness closes in. You lose them in the ordinary paperwork, household chores, routines taken for granted. You lose them in the familiar, a song they used to sing, a scent of their cologne a slice of their favorite pie. You lose them in conversations you'll never have and all the words unsaid. You lose them in all the places they've been and all the places they long to go. You lose them in what could have been and all the dreams you shared. You lose them as you pick up the broken pieces and begin your life anew. You lose them when you realize this is your new reality. They're not coming back. No matter how much you miss them or need them, no matter how hard you pray, they're gone and you must go on. You lose them as the seasons change and the flowers blossom. You lose them again and again. The thing is, we do lose them. We do lose the ones we love. We lose them from our sight. We lose them from our touch. We lose them to the primordial garden, Gan Eden, whose blossoms, like our love, are eternal. The Song of Songs again. My beloved has gone down to his garden, to the beds of spices, to browse in the gardens and to pick lilies. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. He browses among the lilies. Our loved ones continue on in that flower carpeted expanse beyond time, beyond sense, beyond knowing, but not necessarily beyond hearing. We still hear their voices, their words, their laughter, their song in our minds, in our hearts, in our ears, in our dreams. The Song of Songs knew about this too. The Song, the song of Songs knew about love and about death. Let me be a seal upon your heart, like the seal upon your hand, for love is as strong as death. O oh, you who linger in the garden, a loved one is listening. Let me hear your voice. It is the season of flowers. It is the season of love. It is the season of remembering. May we remember their beauty. May we hear their voices. May we feel their love. May their memories be a blessing.